So what we did this morning, we'll start easy and then we build it up, right? To the more complicated questions. But for right now, we saw this morning, if I just looked at A for instance, right? I want to get X by itself, right? Or in other words, I want to collect, I can collect the like terms, right? I got two different things going on here. I have X's or the rods and then I have the numbers, right? And so what you could do is to get the numbers on the, the same side, right? We can go, okay, I'm going to minus three from both sides. And we call this a zero pair. If I add three on the left, I can take away three. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Okay. And you're going to be left with the fact x equals 9 minus 3, and so x equals 12. Okay? Nothing too crazy there. So there's a whole bunch of them. If I was to jump down here, uh, like let's say it, let's not pick that one. Let's do, uh, I don't know, let's do this one. If I just look at that quickly, I want to get the numbers to the, left, the right side. And so I can go, okay, well, it's plus 6 on the left, which means I can minus 6 from both sides. And I get left with x equals 4 minus 6. So x equals negative 2 for this question. Sorry, guys. It's kind of tight. By the time we get to the bottom, I'll use the, the blank page I have underneath, okay? So you can run through those, right? And you say, okay, well... The opposite of adding 5, is, or sorry, subtracting 5 is adding 5. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other, right? And so x equals 6 in this one. So you just run through all those, right? And the nice thing about the sheet is it breaks it down for you. Like, obviously, this is this is the easiest. And then we, we kick it up a notch, right? The, the multiplication division kind of gets a little bit more difficult. This would be like stage 2, right? And then the, the third would be like, okay, well, I'm going to mix in both. Then we just keep getting progressively harder and harder. It's not even harder. It's just you're um, combining more and more steps. That's all, right? So the number of steps required to get X by itself just increases. But the work is all still the exact same. And if you follow it in like a sequential order, like what's being done here on this sheet, you know, if you, if you work with the easiest information first, and then multiplication division <clears throat> it would be like the next most difficult and then the third one would be like if I mix them both together and then what you see that after we do these questions this afternoons is just like okay well I'm just gonna I'm gonna kick in some of the uh, expansion work too from Friday but once you expand, you end up in the same position as these questions here in stage three, okay, where they're both mixed together. Yeah, but it's it's all work you know how to do. You just got to do it in the right order, right? And then I can make the, co the questions as complicated as I'd like. And the main ideas are the same, right? We're trying to get all the rods on one side of the equal sign and all the little numbers on the other side, right? And then it's just organization, right? And just being careful with the signs. Okay, so let's let's just come. Uh, all right, we can do one of these questions here, for instance. We saw this morning if I get the if I get the question kind of looking like this, right? I know these two things here are attached with multiplication. Okay, so if they're attached with multiplication, the the way to untie it would be to divide. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I know that 10 divided by 10 is 1, right? And it's 1 W because you didn't divide out the W. 1 W is equal to the 180 divided by 10. Well, 180 divided by 10 is going to be 18. Okay? And you can just run through all of these. Now, sometimes... Sometimes you guys can go, okay, well, um, I'm just looking at one in particular down here. Some of you may recognize by just looking at this, right, that uh, 5 times 6 equals 30, right? 
And you might be asking yourself, well, why can't I just look at all these questions and say, well, t equals 6. It must be, right? And you you would be right. This would be called solving uh, by inspection. Okay? Which is great, right? If you guys can do that, that's great. But I, I'm just looking at a couple questions here. Uh, particularly this one or this one, right? But you guys can look at this one too, right? And say, okay, well, three times what gives me 18? Well, three times six equals 18. So F must be six, right? But problems begin to arise when you get questions like G or R, right? The problem is there's no even number that goes in, uh, that you can multiply by four to give you 25. And there's no even number, and by even I mean like something that's not a decimal, right? Like a whole number, there's no whole number that you can multiply 6 by to give you 15, right? So that you're, in a, you're in a crossroads now, right? Because the solving by inspection breaks down, and you're forced to use what it is I'm showing you, okay? The same could be true for these questions down here. You guys could try and solve these with inspection. That's totally okay. But it's a little bit, I think personally, it's too much thinking, right? It hurts my head to have to sit here and try to figure out, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Some of these questions, right? Like three times what plus 11 equals 14. That's like this one here, right? This hurts my head to have to sit here and think about this. Three times what number? Plus 11 equals 14. You can sit here and run a list and do, and just, no, right? At least I don't want to, and I don't want you to either, right? I want you guys to be able to, like, say, okay, well, just for instance, let's, let's do that question, okay? I'll take a K, and we'll do it down here. So I'm saying, like, 3K, sorry, it's 3X, not that it matters. 3X plus 11 equals 14, right? Now, what I was saying up top is I would deal with the things that are the easiest, right? And so the easiest thing that I can think of in terms of math would be like the addition subtraction, right? You guys learn that at a very young age, right? So, and then the next most difficult thing would be the multiplication division. So the way I like to solve problems is to think like, I'm going to do the easiest things first, right? And the hardest things last. And if I think about the way that that relates to bed mass, right? Um, I think exponents uh, are more difficult than division and multiplication. The same way that I think uh, division and multiplication is more difficult than addition and subtraction. Okay? And so what ends up actually happening is to, to solve problems we actually go backwards with bed math. Okay, and I, I, you guys don't have to remember that. I just like thinking I'm gonna do the easiest things first, right? And so the easiest thing to do here for question K would be to say, okay, I see that there's a plus 11 and I wanna get the numbers to the other side. Well, how do I get the numbers to the other side? It's zero pairs, right? So if I'm adding 11 on the left, then I can also take away 11 from both sides, right? And I'm gonna be left with three X is equal to 14 minus 11. And again, you guys don't have to write all these steps. I'm just doing it for everyone's benefit, right? So three X is equal to three, right? Okay, well, what's the, most ne the next most difficult thing? Well, these two things are attached with multiplication. I can divide both sides by three and I get one X is equal to one. That's nice. Right? Sometimes I just have a hard time like visually like what number has to go in here to make this true, right? Not all these questions are difficult, but th this afternoon's questions are gonna be more difficult for you to see what value of X you need, okay? And so if we, if we try to get you in the routine of using um, what I'm showing you right now, then this afternoon's questions won't be that bad. It's just like, it's the exact same thing. We're just going like 
here's the most basic of the questions, right? The easiest, and then multiplication, division, and then here's them both together. There might be like, I don't know, there might be stage four and five, right? Five being the most difficult. This afternoon, I don't know if we'll get to stage five. I might just leave you in stage four. But that's all, like, if you just follow these steps backwards, and with the, the ideas in mind that we're just trying to get what 1x is equal to, that's solving equations, which is a very, very powerful tool for you moving forward. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? With that, I'll do one more, and then we'll move on to maybe some of the harder ones from uh, the questions I posted online. Okay? You very quickly get into the routine. If you do, like, 10 of these things, you very quickly get into the routine of, like, do the easy thing, move it, collect the like terms, right? However that looks. Sometimes you've got stuff all over the place. Like the concept does not change. You're trying to clean up what you see and get what one X is equal to, right? That's what you're after. So let's just do one more just so we could say we did them. Okay. Um, I don't know. Let's do I. Okay. 10 X minus seven. equals 23 did I see 60 okay what's the easiest thing to do I see the 7 floating there that looks easy to do the addition subtraction that's what you're gonna be your first step right so if I'm at if I'm taking away 7 on the on the left I can add 7 to both sides that creates a zero pair. And now we say, okay, 10x is equal to 63 plus 7. 10x is equal to 70. Okay. And I'm like, okay, well, what's next? I'm stuck. Well, I want 1x by itself. 1x equals something. Right? How do I get that? Well, I can divide. Divide. You could also sometimes have a multiply, right? So I'm going to put that here too. That's stage two, right? In this particular instance, because these two are attached to multiplication, I'm choosing division because division is the opposite of multiply. So all you got to do is divide both sides by 10, right? You get 1x is equal to whatever 70 divided by 10 is. Well, that's 7. Okay. Any questions, comments, concerns before I move over? Okay, I'm just gonna jump to uh, this sheet that you all have. It's called homework 1.1. Okay, number one just has a bunch of questions, right? Like what we just finished doing. Okay, they're on the more uh, complicated end of things if you will let's let's just do uh we'll take a look at d that should just set us up oh you guys can't see sorry or maybe you can i don't know okay we'll take a look at d remember the whole thing is about um organization and this word in english i think we all kind of know what the word means in english Translated into math, we're talking about collecting like terms. Okay. And so I'm just going to write the question out here. 6x plus 8 equals 4x minus 10. Okay. You always start with the easiest thing, addition, subtraction. Right. And so... I'm also going to like look at where are the rods and where are the single little numbers, right? That's what you're after. And the idea is you want to get the rods and the numbers on opposite sides of the equal sign or the blue pieces and the purple pieces on opposite sides. That's what you're after. And to do that, we use addition subtraction. Okay? We pick the opposite of whatever we see there, right? And so 
to move to, or to get all the blue pieces on one side, <clears throat> we can say, okay, well, what if I want a minus 4x here? Right? Because it's plus 4x here. If you don't see a minus sign, you assume it's plus 1. Or positive, sorry. Not plus 1. Positive. Okay? That creates a zero pair with the blue piece. So we could rewrite that. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm going to say, okay, 6x minus 4x plus 8 is equal to negative 10. Right? You'll see I still have... Uh, on the left, I still have that purple piece sitting there, though, right? But now, we're good with the blue pieces, right? They're both on the left. We could say, okay, <clears throat> we'll just clean it up. What's 6x? Oh, let's do one more other thing first, sorry. If this is plus 8 here, then the opposite of adding 8, or to create a zero pair, we need to subtract 8. Right, we're going to get 6x minus 4x. That's equal to negative 10. Take away 8. Okay. Now we can do our math. Right. We're going to say, okay, 6 rods take away 4 rods. That's 2 rods is equal to <clears throat> negative 10 take away 8 more. Please don't say that this uh, negative 2. Please don't say that, right? We're standing at negative 10, and I'm going to go 8 more to the left. That is negative 18. Okay? And so we're left with 2x is equal to negative 18. We're now in the multiply slash divide stage. Okay, well, I see these two are attached with multiplication, so I'm just going to divide divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Negative 18 divided by 2 should be negative 9. <clears throat> okay. Now additionally, like on that page that I gave you, if you guys, you guys could try all the questions if you want. <clears throat> Some of them are pretty messy. Right? My point is like, I just want you guys to be able to solve like like I said, the, maybe the number four is a bit level of difficulty, right? That's going to do you well moving forward if we can get all the way through the, the level four difficulties, okay? Um, but all your answers are listed here. Just because something's a decimal number does not change the process that you're trying to follow. You have rods and you have numbers. It doesn't matter that the numbers have decimals in them, right? You're just trying to organize and solve for what one X is worth. That's it. It's the whole game. Okay, so that was 1D. Okay, let's just, uh, if I'm looking at a question here, I'm just going to try and combine some of the work we did on Friday. So, uh, what if I did uh, 2G? Okay, I'll write that out down here, and then we'll, we'll solve it, okay? Might take a few scrolls here. Uh, Twelve times three x. Two m minus three. Actually, I gotta redo this. I did two m minus three is equal to. Two m plus four. All right, <clears throat> this is the question, okay? I see the equal sign. This is just like a collecting like terms question from Friday with an equal sign in it, okay? So the only difference between this question and the one we just finished doing is we have some expansion work in order to get to this stage. That is literally the only difference. If you understand this question, you are good. Okay. It, nothing's different aside from that there's one more step up here that we got to do to get to here. And that's it. Right? What's that step? That's the expansion work I showed you on Friday. Okay, so let's go down to our question. <clears throat> we basically say, okay, um, 
you got two tables here, right? You've got 12 and 2m minus 3. 12 times 2 is going to be 24 with an m on it. 12 times negative 3, well, that's a bit trickier. That's negative 36. Okay? Just keep in mind what I'm doing just for everybody's benefit. This and this makes 24 with an m on it. And then 12 times negative 3, that produces negative 36. Okay? This, what's in the inside, the area, right? You'll recall, I'm going to get rid of the highlighters because it just makes a mess. This on the inside replaces all of this. It's all gone. And what are you left with? You're left with 24m minus 36. And that has to be equal to, we've got to do the other side now. Um, 2 and m plus 4. 2 times m, 2m. Remember there's an imaginary 1 there on the m. And then 2 times 4, that's plus 8. Where does that go? That's all of this. So you just write it out. You say, okay, 2m plus 8. Now you're in a scenario like the question above. You know, you got rods, you got rods and numbers mixed all over the place, right? Your job is to organize them, right? Or uh, get the colors on... Get all the blue stuff on one side and all the purple stuff on the other. The interesting thing is that it doesn't actually matter what side, what goes on what. Okay, if you guys want to put the rods or all the blue pieces on the right, I know I've been doing it all on the left, it doesn't matter. Right, if you guys want to put all the blue stuff on the right and the purple stuff on the left, it doesn't matter. It all works out to be the same. Okay, you just got to be careful with the signs, right? So let's just organize or collect like terms. How do I do that? Well, it looks like it's plus two on this side. So if I minus two M from both sides, then I'm going to get 24 minus two M minus 36 is equal to eight. Okay, and then I see, okay, well, Here's a minus 36 here. I need a zero pair plus 36. What you do to one side, you got to do to the other. And so you're left with 24m minus 2m is equal to 8 plus 36. Everything's collected and organized. Do the math. Okay. And then you say, okay, well, 22m, that's equal to 8 and 36 should be 44. And it doesn't matter how big this number is. It's attached to multiplication. So all you have to do is say 22m. All right, that's fine. It's attached to multiplication. Divide both sides by 22. 22 divided by 22, that's still just 1. 1m is equal to 44 divided by 22. 2. You guys could check that, right? You could check that and it would be correct, right? If I was to check it, and remember checking is left side equals right side. That's from this morning, right? Left side being here's your left side and your right side. If there's an equal sign in the middle, then they both better be equal. You just told me what M was. We found it. M was 2. So what you can do is say, okay, well, let's do the work on the left side. We're going to say 12 times 2m minus 3, 12 times 2 times, well, we found m to be 2, minus 3, 12 times 4 minus 3, what's 12 times 1, which is equal to 12. That's the left side. And we want to check to see if the right side also equals 12. So you go back up and you say, okay, well, 2m plus 4, that's the right side. All right, what did we say m was equal to? 2. All right, well, it's 2 times 2 plus 4. 
because m was 2. Then we get 2 times 6, which is equal to 12. Look at that. That's the right side. These are both equal. So then we know that our answer of 2 is correct because the left side balanced the right side. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? I'm just going to check the chat here. Oh, got it. No, no worries, Zach. I'm just getting your message early. No, it's okay, buddy. Okay. Honestly, guys, if you, if you guys can do this, you're in a really good spot moving forward. Might do one more and more difficult one. Just to say that we've done it. Well, something like 3i. Okay, we'll do 3i and then we'll call it, okay? <clears throat> okay, here's what you got. So this one looks relatively simple, but there's one little trick in here, okay? Looks like the ones from, I don't know, the first page from this morning's homework, right? But it's just got this annoying one half there. I'll show you how to deal with that. Okay, so we've got a plus seven out front, right? So I just want to organize. That's kind of the collecting like terms is always your first step, right? Is, is looking for the zero pairs and, and getting things on one side relative to the other. So. I see that there's a plus 7, so that must mean I have to subtract 7 to get a 0 pair. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, so I minus 7. And your next line is going to look like 1 half y is equal to 10 minus 7, which is 3. Okay. Now, I can see this being an issue, right? Everybody's thinking, oh, that's... Uh, that's attached with multiplication. Uh, you wouldn't be wrong to say 0 0.5 times y. That wouldn't be bad. That's equal to 3. The problem arises, if it, what if you have 1 third? I don't want people writing 0 0.33 because it's actually 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. It's repeated. And so I don't like this. I don't like taking a fraction and turning it into a decimal for this reason because... Now you're rounding and your answer is going to be wrong because you've rounded. So not a lot, but it's going to be wrong. Okay, so I don't want to see this. Okay, I don't want to see this either. What I do like to see, and you'll thank yourself later for it, is let's just have a quick reminder as to how to multiply fractions, right? We have 1 half y. This basically means 1 over 2. And I'm multiplying that against y. But I think maybe we talk, and this could, I've taught this so many times now, I forget where I said it, or where I say it. You can write anything you want divided by 1. 3 divided by 1 is still 3, right? You have not changed anything. Okay? I can write the y divided by 1 as well. Does anybody have any problems with that? I'm going to watch the chat right now in case anybody's freaking out. Okay. You're allowed to do that. You can divide anything you want by 1. It doesn't change the number itself. Right? And then for those of us who this might be new for, I don't know. But to multiply fractions is actually great. It's easier than adding and subtracting, actually. You just do top and top times top and bottom times bottom. Right? So you get 1 times y. Well, that sounds like 1y. And 2 times 1 in the bottom, that's over 2. So essentially what you've gotten here is you're allowed just to go, when you see something like 1 over 2 multiplied by y, that just turns into y by 2. These are equal statements. 
Okay, that's what this is here. More specifically, this. Okay, it's just y by two. Okay. Now, the question must be asked at this stage. If we have a y and we're trying to divide it by two, I'm using the word division, right? So I see that this is, we're dividing here, right? Well, in order to get the y by itself, I have to do the opposite of what I see. Well, if I'm dividing, the opposite of division is going to be multiply. Right? And so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And what's going to happen? The 2's, well, here, I'll do more steps. If I multiply both sides by 2, I get the equation turns into 2y divided by 2 is equal to 3 times 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1y one is equal to 6 because I did 3 times 2. Okay? Anybody freaking out? I just want to reiterate the fact that like if you guys can do this, you don't have to like it's okay to struggle with some of the questions like number five. Those are kind of like, you guys want to try some questions in five, the academics. If you guys want to try some questions in five, do that. Because that will come in useful. Okay? The applies, we don't have to get that in depth. Okay? Okay, just being able to solve or re rearranging equations in itself is like a, you guys will thank yourself for being able to do that. Right. And you're always falling back on the fact that like there's a diff you just it's collecting like terms, right? And just being organized and systematic in the in the solving process, right? We don't need like nothing crazy complicated. You just gotta like do what's easiest, collect the like terms, organize first by doing what's easiest, right? I like it I everybody likes addition subtraction little bit easier to conceptualize versus multiplication division which is easier than exponents right it's the opposite of bed mass so when you're doing these questions just think opposite of bed mass right I did the addition subtraction first and then the multiplication division and then I didn't have any exponents to work with this was it you're done right questions over you identify is it division or multiplying and just do the opposite you get your answer you can always check your answers too right it doesn't matter how how ugly these things get right concepts still there okay anybody have any questions um, it's kind of hard to balance both the academic and applied at the same